Greetings of peace, salam, shalom. This is Sumayan Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, welcoming you to the first ever virtual Ramadan iftar held probably in the whole world. So we are gathered today as brothers and sisters coming together to learn from each other and to build relationships and uh, build sisterhood and brotherhood. Um, to start us off, I'm inviting our own uh, Rabbi Peter Berg to kick us off. And uh, for those who don't know Rabbi Berg, Rabbi Berg is a pillar in the Metro Atlanta um, world, if even bigger than that. And uh, whatever Peter Berg says, people listen to him. So we're so glad and honored to have Rabbi Berg with us this evening. Al, yeah. come on. Uh, th thank you, Sumaya. Uh, unfortunately, my kids did not hear that message uh, because they're not listening to anything I say today. Uh, but it is so great to see everybody. Uh, Sumaya, thank you for your leadership and for your incredible friendship over all of these years. Ramadan Kareem to all of our friends, our, our Muslim brothers and sisters from near and far. Um, it's so exciting to be able to share uh, friendship and sisterhood and brotherhood with you tonight. Uh, there are so many friends on this call uh, from the ISB, from the temple, uh, when we first, when I first logged in, I was going to go through and start calling people out, but I would get in so much trouble if I did that because I wouldn't be able to see everybody. Um, but I know that um, uh, I just I want to make one brief note that um, uh, Imam Sabri is on the phone, and we we had the on the call, we had the the privilege of traveling together. This is going to sound like a joke, but it was a a rabbi, a rabbi, an imam, and a priest uh, who got to travel together um, uh, to Morocco. And it was really um, uh, just a, a life-changing experience for, for the three of us. And I'm glad we're on the call. Uh, there are leaders of the Jewish communal world and of the temple on the call. Um, we actually have many, many members of temple's executive committee and board on the call, uh, which is just so exciting. Doug Pike is here, who is chair of our Jewish Muslim group of the Rothschild Social Justice Institute. Uh, uh, one note that I want to say that, it, uh, that um, it makes me sad, uh, something that both the Temple and um, the Islamic Speakers Bureau have had to deal with over these last few weeks in isolation, uh, which is individuals uh, from both of our communities who attempt to get on our calls and, and shout horrific uh, uh, slurs, uh, anti-Muslim sentiment, anti-Jewish sentiment, and it's sad that we live in a world where people have to do that. Um, and it just uh, uh, reaffirms to me the reason, one of the reasons why our friendship and the work that we do together is so very important. A few notes on why we're here tonight. Um, Muslim-Jewish relations is a very important part of who we are at the temple. And when we uh, uh, re-housed uh, our social justice work at the temple a number of years ago, uh, under the auspices of the Rothschild Social Justice Institute, we chose 10 issues to focus on, 10 areas that we wanted to grow and strengthen uh, and to stand um, strong in the community. And one of those areas is the relationship between Jews and Muslims here in the greater Atlanta area. So it's really a, a core part of who we are and what we do. And last year, we held the first Jewish Muslim Seder during Passover, which many of you I'm looking on the call were a part of. And it was a lot of fun uh, to teach uh, our Muslim neighbors a little bit about Passover and to see what we have in common in, in terms of the themes of the holiday. And today we're gonna be able to do the same thing. We're gonna have the Jewish community learn a little bit about Ramadan and learn also some of the areas that are in common. Um, as Sumaya said, the plan was for this to be in person, uh, but here we are in the world we live in and we're doing everything online on Zoom. But I think it might be the first, uh, the first Jewish Muslim iftar ever in the history of the world. That could be very cool if it is. Uh, maybe it's not, but we'll just say that it is, because uh, <laughs> that sounds good. Um, there is, of course, one thing that we're going to be missing, um, uh, which is uh, I had the privilege of, of going to uh, a number of iftars over the years, and the food is absolutely unbelievable. And we, we haven't figured out yet how to do food over Zoom. Uh, but one of, the, one of the really amazing things was is everything that we ate, we would say, that's so familiar. It's a little different, but it's like a first cousin of all the food that uh, Jews eat at Jewish gatherings. Um, so 
we're going to say that we're going to postpone that for another time when we can all gather together um, and eat. Both the ISB and the temple are so committed to the work that we're doing of building bridges. That makes tonight really special. So we're going to learn about some important values and traditions related to Ramadan. Um, I'd like to begin by offering, it's take me two seconds, two very brief thoughts. One is that family is so very important. Um, when I have attended an iftar, I'm always touched by family participation and love. Um, and to me, being on this Zoom call feels like family. So we're, uh, it's really exciting to me that we can participate in that value. And the second is that just as charity is an important part of Passover um, that we discussed at our Seder last year, uh, so is charity an important part of, of Ramadan. And this is a time for us to think about supporting organizations and agencies and people that are building bridges and making our community stronger. So as we begin our program, I'm pleased to announce that the temple will be making a donation to the ISB tonight in honor of the work that the ISB does every single day to build bridges in our community and to make our faith community even stronger. Ramadan Mubarak to all who are celebrating and observing. And it's our pleasure now to turn to a video. Uh, Kenny Blank very much wanted to be here this evening. Kenny's an important part, like me, he serves on the ISB uh, advisory board, and he is also part of the Blank family that helped to institute the uh, Rothschild Social Justice Institute. So Kenny is the most logical person to offer greetings. Uh, here he is. Greetings, salam and shalom. I'm Kenny Blank, Executive Director of the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival and a proud member of the Islamic Speakers Bureau Advisory Council. Ramadan is a time when our Muslim brothers and sisters normally come together in spiritual reflection and in celebration and joy. This year, with circumstances often separating us from those we love, Ramadan reminds us all that we have the strength to triumph over the adversities of life. In these challenging times, may the spirit of Ramadan stay in your heart and illuminate our souls from within. On behalf of all of your friends at the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival, we renew our pledge to you to continue building bridges of understanding through cinematic stories. And we extend wishes of peace, of happiness, and now more than ever, good health onto you. Wishing you a very happy Ramadan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. That's very generous of, of the, the temple and of you. We really appreciate your support and the friendship and the partnership that we have built throughout the years. Uh, welcome to all of you who are here tonight. It's just so amazing to be together, even if, though it's virtual. It just feels like we're in a room full of folks. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, having some reflections about Ramadan. And um, I want to start off by asking Noha Zaba to share with us her reflections about Ramadan. Noha is a law student at Vanderbilt University and as you're listening to the speakers and the reflection, uh, please pay attention to what some of the things that resonate with you from their, their points because we're going to have a breakout rooms later on where you're going to be with some friends uh, to talk about what are some of the aha moments that you've had uh, today in our conversations and what are some action items you're going to take and do with. All right, so Anoha, please come on, put on your video. Thank you, Sumaya. Uh, do you see me? Is my video yes. on? Yes. Oh, great. Hello, everyone. Peace and blessings be upon you. I truly, uh, I hope that each of, uh, and every one of you is keeping safe right now during these challenging circumstances. Um, and I'm truly honored to gather with you today and learn from you. And I'm humbled to share my own Ramadan reflections with you today. Um, Ramadan to me, it's, it's a special time of heightened internal and external cleansing and healing, um, both spiritually and just in, ge in general. It's a, it's a great time to just reflect on, you know, life, take a pause um, and reflect and, um, on my relationship with God and, and strive to improve my practice and knowledge of Islamic teachings and my devotion to God. Um, one thing I like to do is, uh, in order to do that, is to watch short video series from Islamic scholars and to read the translation of the Quran for a deeper understanding of God's commandments. Um, it's also a time of increased gratitude 
and thanking God for his many blessings. And not only thanking him with my words and my prayers, but also by taking care of those blessings. So for example, um, during Ramadan especially, I strive to give the physical body that God blessed me with the proper nutrition and activity to take care of it. Um, I strive to improve my relationship with others, be it my family and loved ones, my neighbors or strangers that I come across. And I think about, you know, a bad habit to cut out and a good habit to replace it. And through this gratitude and obeying God's commandments, I strive to help the less fortunate by giving what I can to charity or helping others who are going through tough times at home uh, or, or across the world. So, you know, like Samaya mentioned, um, many Muslim families also have Ramadan traditions, and this includes my own family. So I wanted to share just a few of my favorites uh, from across the years. Um, so I personally really love to cook. It's, um, you know, so each, each year I really enjoy making iftar with my mom, uh, especially the popular Algerian dish, which is called burak. Um, and this is sort of like a spring roll with, filled with potato, beef, cheese, and it's so good with lemon and parsley. Um, and also feeding others is one of the virtues of Ramadan. So my family likes to host one of our local mosques iftars each year. And another one of my favorite traditions in a more conventional setting is gathering with loved ones. Um, from seeing the community at mosque prayers after iftar, to gathering with friends for iftar and breaking fast together um, with the community. I really just love how Ramadan has a special way of strengthening those bonds and reuniting old friends. This year, Ramadan has consisted of a lot of prayers for the health, safety, and stability of loved ones and all those suffering across the world. Um, it's, it's also been about finding innovative ways to continue those traditions in a more unconventional setting without the physical gatherings with loved ones or prayers at the mosque after breaking fast or the late night ice cream runs with friends that I enjoyed very much. Um, but the silver lining has been spending so much more time at home with my family especially since I'm in school in Nashville throughout the year and most of the year. Um, it's, it's been a real blessing to be home for Ramadan um, and call loved ones back home in Algeria or here. And, you know, it's been really great um, to, to just, you know, think about what we're grateful for and how we can help others during this time. Um, but yeah, during the past week, I've, the first 10 days of Ramadan, um, I was mostly in finals mode for school. Um, but now that I'm finished, I'm really excited to just spend more time reflecting and improving and getting into the Ramadan spirit much, much deeply. So thank you so much for listening to my Ramadan story. And I'm really excited to hear from Dr. Qureshi. Thank you. Wonderful. No, thank you so much. I can't wait to uh, taste the burek that you talked about. You got to send us all the recipe. Definitely. <clears throat> yeah, this is one thing about the virtual iftar is no food is associated with it. So we just got to make belief. All right. So we're going to make belief that we're eating the delicious food that Noha cooks with her mom. Um, next, we're going to hear. Thank you very much, Noha. That was very, very enlightening. Uh, now we're going to uh, listen to Dr. Saqib Qureshi. Uh, Saqib is... Um, is a physician in the metro Atlanta area, an amazing friend, and amazing supporter of so many causes. Uh, Saqib, welcome. Thanks, Samaya. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum and Shalom to everyone. It's really good to be a part of this evening. I'm here feeling gratitude and connection with all of you guys. Today is the 11th day of fasting. And at my house, it's my wife, Samira, and I, um, our three kids. We've got two boys who are eight and six. A baby girl, Rania, who is a year and a half. She's really not a baby anymore. She's acting like a preteen already. <laughs> and um, well, in the morning at around 4.45, one of us will wake the other and we sleepily head to the kitchen. We usually aim to eat a really good meal, but sometimes all we can really stomach is some water in the morning. The boys, Zane and Rumi, um, they're too young to fast, but a few times they have woken up and kept us company. Our house, uh, it goes through a noticeable shift during Ramadan. We're fasting and that's a change in and of itself. And the kids can see we're a little slower, um, more deliberate, 
sometimes cranky, at least me, um, around 4.45 or 5. Uh, and we have a Ramadan table. Uh, it's um, kind of like a decorative table. We've got copies of the Quran, Ramadan-related books. Uh, in their generation, they've got books like Curious George Celebrates Ramadan. So we've got kids' books, um, which I didn't have when I was a kid. And uh, we keep a calendar to help keep track of which day we're on. We also keep our California Medjool dates on the table. Samira, my wife, she's more vocal in letting the kids know each time she prays and uh, gives them an opportunity to join her. And this year, for the first time, the boys have actually been leading prayers, which has been a surprise and uh, a real beautiful thing to witness for me. Samira enjoys hearing a Quranic recitation play in the afternoons, so our house is filled with a melodic vibration and resonance of these most beautiful words from our Creator. And we can't help but feel the presence of God when we play um, recitation. For me, I'm not someone who engages in five daily prayers on a regular basis, but in Ramadan, I try and pray one, two times a day. And it really feels positive, um, a breakthrough for me to make contact so regularly. And I usually feel renewed in how I feel in regarding the value of prayer. As a family, we all pray the sunset prayer together, Maghrib. And we tend to check in about twice in the evenings. Um, this is kind of how it's been this month. Um, once in the hour or two before the sunset prayer, and this first check-in with the kids is often focused on learning. We have cards that we made, um, some of them we collected, just these little cards that we kind of put <clears throat> out, and uh, we use them as prompts for daily lessons or questions. And we particularly love to talk about our family values that connect us to our religion, like giving charity and aid to those less fortunate how we stand for justice and truth in our household. And we try to connect these values to what the kids see us engage um, in the community uh, all year and definitely during this month. Like we work with Burmese Rohingya refugee community in Clarkston. We work with the Inner City Muslim Action Network, which focuses on healthy reentry from prison to community life and work. We make stands, <clears throat> we try to make stands um, and, and join other people for civil rights and human rights locally and nationally. And we remind them that's why we were at the, you know, Asian American Advancing Justice Banquet and we support South Asian Americans leading together and, and we support human rights in places that we're from, Kashmir and Pakistan and India. After the sunset prayer, during the time um, for open supplication, right after prayer, dua, um, we check in about what's on top for us. We encourage the kids and we talk about how we're feeling positive feelings like gratitude and joy and connection and darker feelings like sadness and fear and anger. And honestly, this year, the kids have had a lot on their mind and a lot of feelings in their hearts, like we all do. They've been out of school because of COVID-19 for almost two months and they've absorbed a lot of fears. And this year we really end up exploring ideas around death and heaven and coping through prayer and how to feel ease by connecting to the goodness of God and the universe. With my exposure risk as a doctor, they're scared. They cry you know, episodically. They're scared for their grandparents and they watch their nanny grieve when her grandfather died of COVID-19 just a few weeks ago in Michigan. Our family dog <clears throat> died a couple months ago and they mixed in their grief into these prayers too for our uh, dog, Philadelphia. <clears throat> but this current moment of social distancing is kind of hard for me because for me, Ramadan is really all about connection. And what I love most about Ramadan is how connected I feel to so many people. And I'm sad I'm not getting to do what I love to do, which is go from mosque to mosque to mosque every night. Um, this is, there's like, I don't know, 80 mosques in the metro area. And usually around Ramadan, during Ramadan, all the mosques are open. And I loved going in the evenings and standing shoulder to shoulder with friends and family and strangers, breaking bread and seeing and feeling the simultaneous Alhamdulillah, or uh, thankfulness to God. But even though this year it's different, <clears throat> given this pan pandemic, and I'm feeling, I'm still, I'm still feeling connected to a world of people, you know, all of you guys, I'm sure. You know, we're a, a world of people right now praying and reflecting and facing fears and anxieties about the suffering 
and uncertainty before us <clears throat> and ahead of us. And we're all feeling this fragility of our place on this mortal coil together, humility. And my prayer for humanity this Ramadan is that for me and for us, that um, we realize how sharing bread, caring for another, looking towards progress for all, not just some, is the only way forward. I realize many of us, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, are praying for the same thing. And so actually, in the end, this Ramadan does not feel so lonely after all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Thakim. That was so beautiful. You brought us into your to your world and to your family and what y'all do. That was very, very nice. Thank you so much. And we expect recipes from you as well because there's a request now uh, for, for Noha to send in recipes. So Thakim, you need to send recipes to all of us as well. Will do. Thank you so much. Uh, we are very honored uh, this evening to have Imam Mansour Sabri uh, to also provide his reflections about Ramadan and what does it mean to him and um, the community at large from a, both a spiritual as well as a, a human level perspective. Imam Mansour. Beautiful. Assalamu alaikum, shalom, greetings of peace to everyone. Uh, Sumaya, thank you so much for, uh, for this work and just being committed to bringing communities and people together in the right spirit. Uh, Rabbi Berg, good to see you. Uh, again, hopefully we get to break bread again soon after all of this uh, COVID-19 is over. You know, the, the, the blessed month of Ramadan um, is a reminder for us to really have an inward look at ourselves. Um, in the Quran, it says uh, the month of Ramadan was revealed to us as it was revealed to those before you that you may learn a sense of self-restraint, that you may learn taqwa. Uh, and this taqwa why this idea of high regard for God is to really come to know yourself, to know your relationship with the Creator. The, the Muslims all throughout the world, we begin this fast together uh, on the ninth month of the lunar calendar, and we begin it to really have a sense of, of connection with, with each other and a connection with the Creator in this combining uh, God and humanity to be a singular moment in time where the highest level of consciousness, respect, and, and admiration is for the creator. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily find the month of Ramadan happening in, um, in this moment of, of a pandemic to be um, any less exciting, uh, any less joyful when it comes to, I, I think people were waiting for Ramadan, like it just like, keep calm, Ramadan is coming. <laughs> that type of spirit has been permeating the community. Uh, I, I wanna share something that really has always stuck with me from um, one of our oldest of scholars, uh, Imam Ghazali, who really began to, to bring a concise look at religious practice and ritual and, and framing it in a way where uh, those who are just striving to do the best they can to maintain their rites and rituals, those who are striving to really dig deep, those who are trying to take their consciousness of the religion uh, to a high plateaus, he gave a, a, a description of Ramadan that I thought has always been uh, a good reminder. He, he, he described it in a way that says, uh, on the first level, for many Muslims, fasting is just being one who abstains from food, drink, um, sexual relations with your spouse during the sunlight hours. But that is a base fast. That is a fast that is uh, on, on only one level. And that there are those who are many in our community who strive to have the fast of their limbs. And that every part of their body is being conscious of God. Every part of their body is looking to be in obedience to God, that what you're saying, your speech, what you're looking at in terms of television, if you're, um, you know, if you're uh, out and about, what you're engaging in is something that you know and you witness is pleasing to God. It just takes your consciousness to another level. And in that third, uh, and I'm giving these briefly, but in that third more potent, uh, powerful level of fasting, he said it's fasting of the mind. And that every thought, every idea is on the consciousness of God. 
and it's and it's and it's and it's and when we think about one of the practices of the worship of the muslim is called dhikr remembrance and we recite the 99 names of god we say that there is only one god uh, many times in in a rhythmic sometimes in a rhythmic tone sometimes in just the beat of the heart and it's this idea of being bringing god into consciousness bringing god into remembrance but this higher fast that every thought every action every deed is an act of fasting is an act of being in this total awareness of god is the striving of the believer this the 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 consciousness of the muslim but ramadan itself has always uh for me been a moment in time to just just separate from a lot of the the rigmarole of life and find quiet moments in the night for for prayer uh, we have a prayer that is the Tarawi prayer. It is the the many um, uh, raka'ats or the many um, components of our salat that we would try to perform it more than what we would normally do in a day in one sitting, reciting the words of God, maybe even the entire uh, one thirtieth of the chat of the of the Quran um, at moment. And it's it's been a communal moment for the most part for so many years as I traveled the world. You have the, the people of the town or the people of that community coming together at their local mosque and they pray together. Um, it's almost a, a, a Friday prayer every night. And this has been the one thing that I, I think has, has struck the community uh, the most here in Atlanta is not having that ability to come together um, in the collective and then pray this special prayer of Ramadan together. And it had me do a little, a little more research and, and, uh, and I've always uh, uh, had it in the back of my mind where it originated from, prayer that the Prophet Muhammad prayed separately from the community. Um, so my is texting. Uh, I hope you are. Can I get a Nabil? Can you hear me? No, 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 sir, I'm sorry, but Gosh. your internet Anyone? is. Anyone? Thumbs up. Yeah. Can you hear me? Ah, okay. Is that, is that any better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm, this is uh, the price we pay for the with the technology but in and just in closing you know it's it's a time right now for us to really just show a sense of gratitude for what we have we are home with our families um we have in many cases food on our on our on our tables uh we have something to break our fast with this is a moment of great gratitude and so it's it's been a, a conscious effort for me to think about those who don't have a home a, a roof over their head those who don't have a meal to break their fast. And, and we've done some collective work in the community to really make sure that you can drive by and pick up a free plate, uh, come to our sites and locations and get a meal, make it public, make it known that even though it's Ramadan and it's the, the uh, lockdown, we can still find ways of honoring our tradition of being just generous, more generous in this day as our prophet has encouraged us to be more generous in the days of Ramadan than any other day, to elevate our uh, goodness um, and, and service to God. And, uh, and, and this, is, um, this has been that. I've seen the beautiful response from the community uh, to do all that we can. And now we have a virtual iftar with Muslims and Jews here together. You know? So we, just, we find a way to continue to increase in our, in our goodness. Um, we ask God to uh, bring us healing bring us mercy, to bless our time, bless our, our, our moments together, and to make us of those who always hear a good word and then do the best of actions. I greet you all again with salam and shalom. Salaamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Imam Mansour. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Uh, now, I just got to remind everyone that for the Muslims on the call tonight, uh, we have not eaten since about 5.15 this morning. And we will break the fast and, and drink water and break our fast on dates at, I think tonight is at 8.26, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, if you've ever seen anybody watch the clock by the second, 
go to a Muslim household when they are breaking the fast. It gets really serious. Uh, my watch says this, and, and my phone says this. No, no, no. The phone is better source. Let's wait another minute. So it's it's a conversation that we all have around uh, iftar time or breaking the fast time. So now it's your turn. We're going to go into break rooms, breakout rooms, and um, we will be about five to six people per room, and identify a person who will report back to us on what the conversation has been in your break room. Uh, make sure that each person gets a minute or so to share their thoughts on what they've heard tonight and what are some action items they want to take with them and do. All right. So I will place you on breakout rooms. Please accept to join and then start the conversation. You will have 10 minutes to do that and then we'll come back and Doug Pike is going to lead our conversation then. All right. See you in a few.
It's like we're back in our breakout session. Yeah, <laughs> slowly building. We're watching a lot of directors from the ISB come back in. Hmm. And we're going to give this a minute and let people get back in. And see, Maya, if I keep freezing out like this, you may have to take this over from me. <laughs> it's been problematic. This is so beautiful. I'm taking selfies, guys. And I'm taking, I'm taking pictures right now as we all come back because this is so beautiful for me. It's like having a family or union of friends and, and uh, people that I've been wanting to see. So everyone smile. Yay. Love it. Okay. So we, I'm Doug Pike and I am the, um, the leader or chairperson or whatever we call ourselves of the um, Muslim Jewish relations group, the Rothschild Social Justice Institute. Um, I'm going to, I feel like talking quickly because not only do we not have much time, All right, so, uh, as, oh, there you go. I keep freezing up. I do not have the greatest connection. Um, every time we get together and um, meet like this, it is always an enlightening and invigorating experience. I think in large part because we're finding that there are a whole lot more similarities than there are differences, even in our traditions. Um, there's no way we're going to be able to hear from all the small groups, but um, I would like to be able to take the opportunity to recognize four or five, depending on how much time we've got, which by my reckoning is about seven minutes. So um, if anybody would like to yeah. the best way is you know, just wave your hand and I will flip through my screens and look for you. And, and Doug, let's, let's ask everyone to just do use the minute to report back and to also uh, say something new that hasn't been said by somebody else. So we can right. get exposure Absolutely. to the breadth of the conversations that we're had. You were calling you, maybe the best way to do this because the screen is so huge, is to just send me a chat, um, Doug Pike, and let me know that you would like to speak. Doug, may I suggest you calling out maybe in your own group, have your spokesperson start us off and then we could uh, ask for a couple more folks to uh, from other breakout rooms. Unless you may have to um, unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. That would be nice. I'm, I'm muted. No, not you. I said, oh, unmute. me. Yeah, I was, uh, I was muted. Sorry. What would, I mean, would you like to say, uh, are we going to the big room or are we going to talk in the little room? Still? You talk here at all, to, to the big room. To the big room. <laughs> um, I just told everybody, I'll repeat what I said, is that uh, it, I learned so much in this short Zoom get together. I've always known about Ramadan but I never realized how much it meant and what the underlying meaning was. I mean, you hear people fast and then eat, but why, what was the goal? And then I hear this people talking about their silent moments of where they can be by themselves and pray to God and be within that spiritual time. I hear when they talk about being with other people that they normally don't see, about getting together and eating meals and, and the joys of it. And I, as, as I was saying, it reminds me much of the Judaism, Judaism and uh, Yom Kippur, where we all count the minutes, <laughs> you know, until you can eat, <laughs> and, uh, or even the seconds. Um, but... Uh, uh, it, it's, it was so much, I learned the depth of it. And that is meaningful to me because you can understand the custom, but what is behind the custom and what makes it mean so much to you? And after listening to y'all 
and the I, way how beautifully, I'm how say beautifully expressed yourself, I, I, I have that sense of what it means to you. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, let's see, uh, Harriet Wilder. Well, this was a very informative evening. I so enjoyed each individual person's telling about their life, their experience, their culture. Um, I must admit that I was not aware of a holiday that lasted a whole month. Um, I think uh, from April 23rd now to May 23rd. And th there's just so much awareness that came out of this meeting. Um, I, I feel grateful that there was such a meeting and I, I feel much more enriched tonight. And um, I enjoyed hearing about the similarities between our religions. And um, I, I was so impressed with each and every speaker. I, I can't begin to tell you the, 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 the closeness I felt to each speaker. And um, it, it was just a wonderful experience for me, as I hope it was for everybody. And um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Doug, thank you. Um, because we're getting close to eight o'clock, let's go ahead and wrap it up. And, and you all have the chat function right now. If you do want to share with us your thoughts, if you did not have a chance to share it verbally with all of us, please share it. And we will share the comments from the chat with everyone, as well as, as the recording. Um, to wrap us up, I invite uh, Dr. Nabil Safdar. There's, thank you so much, Doug. Appreciate you. I even know you had some challenges with your technology, but you were right there, a fighter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate working with you and partnering with you to make tonight happen. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me invite Dr. Nabil Safdar to kind of wrap us up for the evening and hope to have more of these where we get to meet each other, learn from each other, learn about each other, and really uh, form community through knowledge and friendship. Thank you, Samaya. I hope you can all hear me fine. Uh, my name is Nabil Sufter. I am um, on the board of the ISV Atlanta. First of all, I want to say um, the biggest feeling of gratitude, I want to describe the, the biggest feeling of gratitude that I have right now um, to, first of all, to the temple for your partnership and your friendship, to Doug, to Rabbi Berg, and you know, as I look on the screen, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, 25 faces on the screen. And some of you are doubled up. And then if I flip to the next screen, there's another 25 faces. And the next screen, there's another 25 names at least. Um, this is uh, information overload for me, right? Because many of you are familiar faces, faces that I've seen. Um, you know, and I, I reflect on how um, if we were in a room, we would be able to go over to each other and, and shake each other's hands and have a private conversation. Um, and, and here, I just keep looking at your faces instead because I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna talk to, um, to you and I want to talk to you and I want to talk to you. But um, I'm grateful to see all of, your, all of your faces, some familiar, some folks that we haven't met before. I remember um, coming to the temple for the first time and being so um, impressed by the warmth, the hospitality, and the, and the feeling um, that we have, that we have so much in common, like was said earlier. I am looking forward um, to, to two things. Um, one is um, a, a breaking of the fast tonight because in about 20 minutes or so, no one's gonna get in the way between me and the fridge, okay? Um, but there's another breaking of the fast that I'm looking forward to, and that is when we can break the fast from each other right now. And God willing, we can meet in person, um, whether at the temple or in some other forum, break bread, share that bread together, 
because there is a, a fasting from food and drink, but there's also a fasting that we're now experiencing. And if we do it with the right intention, it's to save lives, which is the, one of the highest goals that's common to either of our faith traditions. So we are staying away from each other to save lives. And that is a kind of abstinence. That is a kind of fast. So I'm looking forward to the day where we can break that fast from each other and meet in person. If not this year, then God willing next year uh, during one of our holidays again. Thank you all on behalf of the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta. Um, as you are getting ready to leave, we're at 801. Please do take a moment and um, give us a, a response to the poll that you see on your screen um, and let us know how you, how we will definitely be looking at all the comments. Let us know how you think this could have been better, whether you'd like to see more programs like this. Um, and with that, I will close out the evening. Thank you all. Um, peace, salam, and shalom. Samaya, so you're muted. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all of you for being here with us tonight and going on that experiment with us. We've never done this before. We had no idea what we're getting into. Um, I have to tell you, I'm personally very fulfilled and I just wanna give a virtual hug to all of you and I can't wait to see all of you in person. Thank you very much and uh, salam, shalom. And we're gonna go eat in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.